are listed above. We will now go through each impacted area to briefly summarize the findings and possible mitigation measures. <laughs> the first area is transportation. For three LPA alternatives, travel times would increase by about nine minutes due mainly to the reduction in travel lanes north of Grand Boulevard. Each of, the, each of the alternatives would have a positive impact on transit ridership by improving access to existing and planned attractions and development in the study area. Alternatives A1 and B2 would provide improved transit access to slightly more destinations along Woodward Avenue than alternative B3. Option A illustrates the median running alternative. North of Grand Boulevard, the LRT would operate exclusively as median running. Downtown design option one also utilizes an, a median running alternative. A1, while having slightly longer travel time, is the only alternative for which travel time would be predictable because its median running LRT vehicles would be separated from vehicle traffic. This is an aerial view of what option A, median running, may look like. South of Grand Boulevard, option B, the curb running option, is also being analyzed as an alternative. Alternatives B2 and B3 would operate as curb running. The LRT vehicles would operate in the second lane of traffic from the curb. B3 would improve transit access to slightly fewer destinations along Woodward than A1 and B2 options. B3 would provide the most improved travel time because it is the shortest of the three alternatives. However, travel time would depend on traffic volume and conditions because the LRT vehicles would operate in mixed traffic with automobiles and buses. Also, B3 would require additional travel time to transfer to major downtown destinations away from Woodward. This is an aerial view of what option B, side running, may look like. The LRT vehicles would operate in the second lane of traffic from the curb. The next section is hazardous materials. The LRT would have no long-term impact on areas that may contain contamination since it would not make the existing contamination worse. LRT construction would be generally limited to near surface, at grade work, and is not expected to disturb the subsurface. The exceptions are the LRT station and two railroad underpass locations where most extensive work will occur. Contamination found during construction would be properly re removed and disposed. The vehicle storage and maintenance facility site or VFMF, will include a vehicle wash, paint booth, body shop, and other general repairs to the LRC vehicles. No hazardous materials will be used at the Traction Power Substation, or TPSF site, which supply power to the LRC vehicles. The vehicle storage and maintenance facility sites and Traction Power Substation will require property acquisition. Purchasing contaminated property does make the owner liable for cleanup if proper due diligence is not conducted. Mitigation consists of removing and disposing contaminated soil or groundwater and would only be needed in construction areas with known or suspected contaminated soil or groundwater. Even when the LTA is, is located near or over part of a known contaminated site, the construction may not involve excavation <coughs> to a depth that exposes the contamination. The next section is environmental justice. Darker colors on the map represent higher densities of low income and minority populations. As observed in the figures, a majority of the block groups within the study area has, have significant low income and minority populations. Based on 2000 U.S. Census data, about 82% of individuals in the study area identify themselves as minority, and 34% of individuals identify themselves as low income. According to guidance provided by the Council on Environmental Quality, 50% is the threshold for identifying a minority population, a 
in Wayne County's minority population percentage is slightly higher at 50.1%. Thresholds for low income were also established using CEQ guidance, and 16 of the 84 block groups have 50% or more low income populations. None of the LCA alternatives would pose disproportionately high and adverse human health or environmental impact to environmental justice populations in the city area. There will be short-term construction impacts to residences and businesses, including minority businesses. The vehicle storage maintenance facility site at MLC MAC has been identified as a site of environmental justice concerns, given proximity to neighboring multifamily and senior housing in the area. During construction, residences and businesses in environmental justice communities would experience temporary disruption impacts to pedestrian access and circulation, as well as temporary noise and vibration impacts associated with each of the alternatives. Construction mitigation would include noise and vibration control measures written into construction plans. Traffic mitigation measures would maintain and protect auto and pedestrian traffic and minimize access impacts to minority-owned businesses. The project will have a constant benefit on transportation equity for many living along the corridor and within Detroit and the regional area. Approximately 79% of households in the study area identify themselves as having one car or no car at all. 87% of almost 25,000 households are within block groups with transit-dependent populations that exceed 50% of the population. Given the current concentration of transit-dependent populations along Woodward Avenue, the project will also provide greater transportation equity for all travelers. Based on 2,000 census information, over 1,400 people, or 2% of the study area, identify themselves as having limited English proficiency. The graphic above indicates the concentration of LEP populations are located near Six Mile and McNichols Road and the downtown area. The most popular languages for non-English speakers in the study area are Arabic and Spanish. The next section is noise and vibration. FDA guidance identifies the noise and vibration criteria that must be used for determining potential noise and vibration impact transit projects. It recognizes that some of the categories of land use are more sensitive to noise and vibration than others. Therefore, different thresholds of noise are used for evaluating potential impacts at different land use sites. This figure illustrates the noise levels associated with various land uses. These two figures display the locations at which existing noise levels along the LPA and the three downtown design options were measured and where noise and vibration analysis was performed. 70 sites along the two LPA alternatives and the three downtown design options were measured. These sites were selected for testing.